Hello again, I'm Torden, and this is Advanced Voxel Mancy 202, Extrusions, Offsets, and Flats. Before we get started today, I'd like to do a couple of things. One is say thank you to everybody who's supported these videos. Really appreciate it. Second, I've been getting a bunch of questions about um, whether I have uh, any libraries and various things to give away. Uh, so I'm a teach a man to fish kind of person. So my, uh, I am giving away this uh, one eighth wedge uh, as a teaching tool, but uh, I don't actually give away my other libraries. The good news is, however, there are plenty of other people who maintain library uh, libraries and have plenty of blueprints and, and voxel uh, libraries out there for you. So. Um, just wanted to clear that up. So today, what we're going to talk about is offsets, flats, and extrusions. And it's really about making this sort of thing, where you see I have um, a solid voxel right there, one voxel, and then I have two pillars reaching out to touch it, but they're not distorting. Normally, if I was going to um, have a pillar and attach it to here one way or the other, they would be sharing these vertices and therefore they would uh, meld into one another. Um, the other thing that has been asked of me a lot is um, about uh, foreshadowing and reiteration. So I do in fact uh, talk a little bit about what I might be covering in some next videos and or uh, reiterate some of the stuff I've covered in previous videos. This is by intent, it's a common teaching method um, to help reinforce um, and strengthen knowledge. So um, it's, it's definitely by intent. So this 1 8 wedge that we have right here, um, I'm going to reiterate that I count when I'm working with this one from zero here out to eight at the far end um, and then eight this way and then eight up and it's always you know forward sideways and up which is the way that this wedge is designed so if I want the center I will call it zero 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 and if I want the corner I will call it four 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 and that's because I'm going four this way one two three four and then four this way one two three four and then four up one two three four all right, um, and that lets me quickly move to the one I want because I can visualize how many eighths across I'm I'm working with. Um, so if I want to make a one quarter wide pillar that goes the uh, up through the center of a voxel and ends at the at the wall of each um, uh, you know each wall of that voxel, then if I go first to the wall, so that's the four. Then I go over one and up one. This is my 411 reactor. All right, so we're going to highlight this, copy that out of here, come over here, and we're going to paste it right here. All right, now this is the upper corner. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to post it right there. Now, if I take this one and I rotate it, so another question that was asked a lot is, how are you doing the rotation? So the way rotation works is if I'm facing a block right here, and then I hold down the R key and I scroll my mouse wheel, I can rotate it like this. All right. If I were on the top and I hold down the R key and I use my mouse wheel, it rotates this way, forward and back, depending on which way I spin my mouse wheel. All right. Same thing with this face right here. I can spin it and rotate it. All right. So if I have my reactor right here and I hold down the R key and I spin it. So now it's in the lower corner. So I'm going to put that over here. Also to flip, same principle, except you just tap the R key. So if I'm here and I tap the R key, it flips it this way and then it flips it back. If I'm here, it flips it along the other axis and then back. If I'm here facing this side panel here, then um, I flip it, it flips over and back. All right. Um, so again, uh, I have that corner. So now I'm going to go ahead and rotate again to get this corner. 
like this and then I'm going to rotate it one more time to go up to there all right so now I have the same reactor it is rotated four times um, again I, I also work with uh, colored reactors a lot like I did this corner right here but today uh, for these tutorials I've been using the the monochrome actually to make it simpler and easier to see because specifically this black corner right here this black reactor is always the one that's furthest away from center all right so you see these are all flush now against the far wall and each one is furthest away from center now in a different direction all right so if I was going to build my uh, quarter inch po post as it were so the first one that I put up I'm going to put here and then I'm going to grab this other black one which has been rotated now normally when I'm working I don't move the entire reactor I just grab the two corners and rotate it um, I did the entire reactor so that it was a little bit clearer and easier to see what it was I was doing. All right. um, normally I would just grab these two, rotate them, and put them in the appropriate place. But this time around I've been laying out the whole reactor and you can too. If, I'm, if, if it's unclear to me necessarily which way the rotations are going to go, it's much easier to rotate the entire reactor until you've got the point and the, and the orientation you want it and then grab the appropriate reactor corner. Um, it's just much easier to visualize sometimes. All right, so I've laid these out this way. Now when I grab this, go ahead and place it here. And now we have a flat. This flat is a quarter voxel wide, but it's centered. All right, so it's basically an eighth of a voxel this way and an eighth of a voxel this way, hence my 411 position. All right, now, what's the difference between an extrusion and an offset? All right, at some level, an offset is uh, a variation of an extrusion, but um, it's definitely a little bit different. I'm going to clean up my mess right here. The easiest way to do that is just go ahead and drop a reactor in here, highlight the reactor, and then delete it. Always leave your workspace neat. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and go back over here and grab this again. All right, now if I extrude this, one, two, three, up, one over, drop it come back to the center and drop it again. I am extruding this flat out to outside the primary voxel space. So I'm going to grab the center, undo twice, go back up and paste it. Now this is both an extrusion and an offset. I call it an offset because there's really nothing left of the voxel inside the primary space. The primary space is, you know, in the middle of this yellow bar right here. All right. But the entire voxel is offset to the outside. If I have a piece that's still inside the primary voxel space, then I call it um, an extrusion. And it's really, you know, no particular fancy reason for that, except, you know, it's sort of basic English word uh, meaning of extrusion versus offset um, and so now I have this piece right here all right so this is my offset version of my post all right if I take this same flat all right and I can if I were to extrude it the other direction I would wind up really just with a post through the middle of my voxel. I can also accomplish that a little bit of a shortcut by simply grab, so I'm actually gonna replicate this first. So I'm gonna just copy this whole thing, uh, go up one to the same place I am, one, two, three, four. If you drop these reactors four apart, they, they don't you know get in each other's way. So if I go ahead and grab this right here and copy it, and then we're gonna go ahead and invert it this way, all right, and then push it over to where this is, and then we're going to hold down the shift key and click there. By the way, the shift key doesn't work with the uh, with the arrows and page up and page down at this time. Uh, hopefully, that's a bug that will get fixed. Uh, 
but uh, at the time I was recording this, it does not. Um, so instead, I use the uh, holding down the T key and the mouse wheel uh, to move uh, forward and back away from my surface. So if I hold down T and spin the mouse wheel, I can move here. And then when I get to the location, I can hold down the shift key and do the shift replace, which changes the dominance and pulls this piece out to here. All right, so now we have a post that's here that's uh, a one quarter post that goes straight through the thing. It's flush with the surface of the voxel, both front and back. And this one is an offset of that same thing. All right, now if I take these two, if I go ahead and copy this, and we'll go ahead and run this up one, one, two, three, four and we grab these two here again and we come over here and again holding down the T key going out one tick to here placing that forgetting to hold down my shift key so doing it again pulls it out to here all right, so this one is not offset at all. It's just extruded, right? The It's both inside the prime space and extruded out. This is only one voxel, but it takes up the space of two. All right, the advantage to this is if I take this and I set it up against this right here, Not so if I set it up this way, it's going to do this, right? But if I rotate it here, move it away one and set it down, it doesn't. And the reason is the voxels here, this space right here is empty, okay? So that is extruded out and therefore doesn't exist in this space, therefore doesn't interact with this voxel here, even though it's visually there, all right? If I don't want it to be too long this way, right? I just want it to be one long, then I just use the offset. So if I come back over here and I grab this offset, again, I'm highlighting the entire reactor, holding down uh, my control key, sc scrolling my mouse wheel, um, and copying this. So now you can see from the way that this is grabbed where the blue box is where the voxel really is, but it looks like it's over there. Again, I can spin this around using the R key. I can come out to here and set it down, and I get the same effect, right? There is a voxel here, but it isn't here. It's one over to the right, all right? The downside of this, of course, sort of, not really a downside, but you got to get used to the idea, is that when I place this voxel right here, there's a voxel here in this empty space, all right? So if I place this here, all right, it goes ahead and meets the vertices of this voxel, which are pushed over to here, and so I get this shape right there, which is, you know, cool. I can copy this. This is also now an extruded voxel, all right? Um, the other thing is, it's not necessarily something that I want everybody to pay attention to exactly the pieces that I'm making. It's about the concepts here, about extruding and offsetting pieces, and then being able to work with those. All right. Um, at the beginning of this video, I flew p past some railings and stuff. All of those pieces have, uh, I mean, that uh, array that I showed at the very, very beginning, all of that stuff, you have to offset um, and extrude pieces to make that stuff because otherwise it would be all melding together like this and you'd basically wind up with giant blobs. All right, which is why I started off there. Um, so we've talked about flats. The other thing you can do with flats uh, is make all sorts of, you know, interesting uh, odd shapes that are, well, flat. So I can go out to here and you'll see this merges this way. Um, and then I can uh, go up a little bit and set it down again. And I'm making additional pieces. When you have flats like this, um, you're going to note that there are some bugs in the game where things don't necessarily render flat, even though they are flat. Um, and I'd like to uh, give a, a small hint. If you um, go ahead and grab this and and copy it into the clipboard and then look at the clipboard version. And if the clipboard version is flat, but the rendered version isn't, then 
you know, there's nothing wrong with your vertices. They are in the correct place. And as the game progresses, uh, more and more of these bugs, um, again, this is being recorded in beta, so there are some, some minor bugs with rendering still in the game. Um, and we expect that those will be fixed eventually. So if you're watching this later on and these bugs are not here anymore, then uh, lucky you. We are... Um, anyway, so that's flats and why you make them um, and how you use them to make extrusions and offsets. Keep in mind that flats do not have to be against the voxel wall. I made this one from uh, the 411 piece, but I can just as easily make um, one that starts in a completely different place. So for instance, if I were instead to grab Oh, I don't know. Pick a, pick a reactor at random right here. So I'm going to grab this one. All right. Find a little bit of an empty space right here. Go up. All right. So again, normally if I want to work with a flat and, and I'm working with, and I can do this with separate reactors too, um, but let's say I want to replace these bottom two with this one and make it symmetrical. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate here, come down to here, use the, the T key in the mouse wheel to push it over here, hold down my shift, go ahead and paste it in, and it replaces those two vertices with, with two more. Um, then let's see, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab, uh, oh, I don't know, this one right here. All right, now notice I'm, I'm grabbing the black one because I want the furthest away from the center uh, corner of my reactor. Um, but then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rotate it um, in this direction and go ahead and push it in and hold my shift key and paste that in there. And then let's go ahead and grab, um, oh, I don't know, this one. Whoops, I'm going to grab this corner. And of course, you don't have to use this outer corner if you want to push something in use one of the other ones but for this particular demonstration I'm using the outer corner again we'll go ahead and we'll rotate this and we'll go in and hold down our shift key and paste all right so now we have a flat all right this flat is kind of you know warped here a little bit let's say I was making a sail right on a ship and I don't want my, my shell to look, sail to look blocky. I want it to look like it has wind in it. Well, this might be the beginning of a sail. All right. Experiment. Uh, make things. Uh, one of the reasons I don't give away libraries is because I honestly want you to make your own. Um, the whole point to these videos is to learn to be an advanced voxelmancer. It's not, oh, look, uh, you have to be an advanced voxelmancer to watch these videos. It's this is how you become and learn the tools that give you the ability to make all of these really cool things. So uh, hopefully you found this one useful. Again, this was Advanced Voxelmancy 202, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again.